Hello, welcome to the 8th part of the AWS C Sharp tutorial. In this video, we're gonna extend the API functionality by adding place palette lambda. We're gonna learn how to pass the data to the lambda. So, going straight into the project, we can jump to the main folder where we have our Lambda code. We'll need a new folder for Lambda functions, so let's name it just Lambdas. I will add a new Lambda called place palette function, which will be for now just a class. Why it's not a Lambda yet? First, because we don't have the CloudFormation resource described, but second, it does not have the Lambda Serializer attribute. Let's start with the attribute. In order to have it added to both of our Lambda functions, we can create base Lambda function. It will be just an empty class, but will have the Lambda Serializer assembly attribute, which I will take from the getPalette function. So now I need to inherit in the getPalette from the base Lambda and it should be working this way. So the same needs to be done for the place palette. It also needs to inherit from base lambda function. So now we can create the place palette function. It will return the API gateway proxy response same as the get palette function. We'll need to take the palette from the request. It can be done by using the API gateway proxy request, but I will show you another approach. The only thing Needed is the body of the request, so we can create an object with one property called body and operate on it. So let's go to the inventory manager.client project and create the model. I will call it lambda request because it can be reusable in many different lambdas and inside just one publicly accessible property called body. But Warform will get the correct information about the palette which we want to place. Of course, we don't want to operate on string containing the palette object in form of a JSON. So we should deserialize the body of the request to a certain object. It will be also located here in the client project and I will call it place palette request. It will have two properties. First one is the size. We can reuse here the size DTO, which we created for the get palette response. It will be useful here also. And the weight, which will be of type integer. Great, so let's go back to our function. We can add as a parameter the lambda request that we created. Then we can use the JSON convert class, which is inside newtonsoft.json library and call the deserialize object method. It should return the place palette request so we can pass it here as a generic type and will take the body of our lambda request. Great, now we have the object deserialized. We can now implement a method in the palette service which will be used to insert the palette into database. Let's navigate into it. It will be of type void and will take the place palette request as a parameter. So first of all, we'll need to check if the palette is null or if the palette.size is null. If it is, then we'll need to throw an exception because it cannot be added to the database. I'll use the argument exception and the message will take the name of the parameter and add is null string. Next, we can create the palette model. It will be of type palette as our database entity. We can set the property is placed to true and then create the size object inside palette object. So we can take these three properties from the place palette request from the size object. And at the end, just assign the weight. Okay, so here we have the database model created. Let's now use the inventory manager context add method using it and call the save changes method to persist this object. We can now go back to the place palette function. 
First of all, we'll need to create the palette service. Then we can call the just created place palette method on it, passing the place palette request inside. And we can return the API gateway proxy response with 200 OK status code if everything goes well. Ok, here I have an error. I probably haven't passed the DB context to the constructor of the palette service. Let me fix it. Just create new instance of inventory manager context and pass it to the palette service. And here we have the whole code written. Now we only need to go to the serverless.template file because we need to update it to create the place palette lambda. At the beginning let's just copy the whole getPalette function and adjust it. So of course change the name of this resource to placePalette function. Also the handler needs to be changed. It needs to navigate to the class and then to the function name which needs to be called. And then the event section. We can change the path to place palette without any parameter and the method to post. The whole data will be sent through the body of the request. Ok, as you see both of these functions have a lot of parameters that are exactly the same. It will be working this way but it is code replication and we don't want to have it in our project. In order to define these variables for each lambda, we can define them in the global section. We can create it above the outputs. So every property that is inside this section will apply to every lambda here in this cloud formation template. So let's take the parameters that are the same. So we cannot take the handler, but we can take the runtime, code URI, memory size and timeout. Also the role and VPC config will be the same. Inside the globals we need to have function section. And here we can paste our properties. Oh, the role and policies aren't working. So we need to have them defined separately for each lambda. I have forgot one thing. We have put the lambda classes into lambdas folder. So we need to update the handler to include this folder. If you want to override these variables defined in the global section, you can always define them a second time in specific lambda. It will override the global's parameters. So that's it. Let's now deploy the stack and see if everything is working. I will call the new lambda by using the API gateway. We can navigate to the place palette function and at the bottom we have the request body. Let's just create a JSON describing our palette. So we need to add size, inside of it the three parameters and besides that the weight. Let's now click test and see how it goes. Ok, here it responds with 200 OK. But let's verify it. I have inserted the palette while I had a clean database. So it should receive id equal to 1. Let's now go to the getPalette function and verify if the palette with id 1 exists. Yeah, it exists and here it is, the same as we created it. Great job! Now we have both of these lambdas finished. Now we are able to focus on the security of our solution. In the next video we're gonna move the credentials to the database from our code repository into a special AWS service called Secret Manager. Stay tuned and if you like this video don't hesitate to subscribe.